You can create your own website that looks just like this one without breaking the bank. It's pretty easy to do and you don't need prior development experience because I'm going to show you how to do it. Ready to get started? First, I want to start with an overview of all of the pieces we'll need to fit together to get a functioning website. We'll need at least one HTML file to serve as our homepage. We'll also need a style sheet or CSS to help our homepage to look good. We'll need a host to store our website and make it available to the world. And we'll need a domain, our virtual address for people to find us. To get your HTML and CSS files, we're going to use Visual Studio. It's free and available on both Windows and Mac OS, so it's perfect for our purposes. Go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and download Community 2019 for your operating system. The left card is for Windows machines and the right card is for Mac OS. After the executable has downloaded, open it and follow the on-screen instructions to begin installation. When you're asked which packages you wish to include in installation, make sure that ASP.NET and Web Development is selected. Once Visual Studio is installed, we're ready to create our HTML and CSS files. Now to make this process as easy and painless for you as possible, I decided to make you your website. It looks like this in Chrome. It's a one-page website with a page title and favicon in the tab area, a logo in the menu area, the menu sticks to the top for easy navigation, it has a feature section, an about section, and a contact and social media section. Behind the scenes, it's well commented in the code and gets the green light from Google. All you have to do is go to elenagen.com, go to this post, and then copying and pasting the code from my website, which I'll show you how to do in a bit. Or you could simply just download everything you need in a lovingly crafted package that I made for you. When you click the download button, you'll get a zip folder named Your Website Made With Love. Extract that folder inside will be a folder named Website and the PDF guide I made for you. Open Visual Studio, click Continue Without Code, in the menu area, select File, Open, File, navigate to where you downloaded your website folder, select index.html, and then click Open. You can now skip to the customizing your website portion of this video. The timestamps are in the description. To start, we're going to create a new folder to house your website. For simplicity, put this folder on your desktop or in your documents so you can find it easily. Name it Website. Next, open up Visual Studio, click Continue with Code, then select File, New, File, choose HTML page, and click Open. Go ahead and save the file as index.html by navigating to File, Save HTML page 1.html as, then navigating to the website folder you just created, naming the file index.html, and clicking Save. Now navigate to elenagen.com, click on this post, and scroll down to the first code block under Writing Our HTML section. Copy all of the code within the block and paste it into the index.html in Visual Studio. Resave the file by hitting Ctrl S or by going to File, Save Index.html. Next, we need to create our style sheet. So go to File, New, File, Select Style Sheet, click Open, and then save the file as stylesheet.css by going to File, Save Style Sheet 1, navigating to your website folder, renaming the file to Style Sheet, and clicking Save. Make sure that the name matches this line precisely, including the case, or your browser won't be able to find the file. On the same page on my website, scroll down to the second code block under Writing Our CSS and copy all of the code inside that block. Then in Visual Studio, paste the code into your stylesheet.css file and resave. Now we're ready to customize. If you don't have this window down here, go to View, then Task List to get it, and it will show you a list of every area you should customize. It also skips to those sections when you double click, so let's double click the first one. Here's where you change the metadata for the page. This is non-critical, but it's still a good idea to update it with your information. Let's click on the next one. It's the page title. To change it, and to change any of the text in this file, select the old text between the closed and open angled brackets and simply type in your text. After each change, save your file. It's also a good idea to open your file in your browser to review the change you made. Let's do an image. 
This one is the logo. We actually don't have to change anything in this file. Instead, you'll just save all of your images to match the name and file type as the default images, and your browser will use your images instead. We'll go over that in just a bit. Let's do one more text update together. This is in the feature section. Just like with the page title example, select the text in between the angled brackets and replace it with your text. Control S to save, switch over to the file in your browser, Control R to refresh, and review the change you just made. Keep going in this fashion until you've updated all of the areas. To keep track, you could delete the to-do portion of the comment, like this, after you've updated that area. That will remove it from the task list, but keep the comment intact in case you need it later. There's a few last things I want to show you. So I'm going to click this to do, add or remove social media links. Notice that there's a pattern for each social media link, each starting with this line and ending with this line. Select the corresponding lines of the social media link you wish to remove and hit delete. Save your file and then switch over to your browser and refresh it to see the result. As you can see, Instagram is missing. If your file isn't open in your browser, navigate to your website folder and double-click your index.html file. It should open in your default browser. To undo that, hit Ctrl Z or navigate to Edit, Undo, and resave your file. We can add a social link in a similar fashion, except instead of deleting lines, we copy them. Select the same lines from any of the blocks, hit Ctrl C, place the cursor in this empty space at the end, then paste by typing Ctrl V or Edit Paste from the main menu. Then update the link and change the name for the platform's logo. For uniformity, if you need to add another logo, you could create a 100 by 100 pixel document in Canva and just make sure that you save the image as the same name you gave it here. You'll update the main images in a similar way. I'll walk you through it with the About image. This is the image I want to replace the default About image with. To do that, I'll delete the About image.jpg in the website folder, copy my image into the folder, and then rename it About image.jpg. Now if I refresh the browser, my new image will appear. Do this for the logo, the hero image, and the about image. Lastly, there's just one minor little thing left, the favicon. It's a little tricky to make, so I'm going to create another supplementary video on how to do that as well, and put the card here for you. Once you've made all of the updates and replaced the images, you should have your very own customized site. Keep an eye out for additional videos that I'll be releasing that will help you to get the most out of your new website, including the next part in this three-part video series where you'll select a host and get set up to go live. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll be notified when a new video is published. In the meantime, watch this video on how to use your shiny new website to promote your YouTube channel. And finally, good luck and have fun. Thanks so much for watching.